All right, so we're gonna start with our first Photoshop practice, and we're gonna go to the internet, and we're gonna type in the word heart. So we're gonna find a picture like this. Uh, I think it's important to do something like this, plural hearts, because we're gonna take some away, and we're gonna add some, we're gonna copy and paste them. So when we're on the internet here, we're gonna go up to our picture that we want, and we're gonna right click, and we're gonna save. Now, mine's gonna go to my computer because I'm working on a desktop. You guys are gonna be on your Chromebook, so this is automatically gonna to wanna to go to your drive. So you wanna go save that to your drive, so please do that. I'm just going to throw mine on the desktop. We're gonna hit save. I do want you to notice this picture here has the checkered background. Uh, that is going to be a PNG or transparent image. We're gonna to go to this website photop.com and we're gonna go open a new project now there's a lot of things you can use as templates which maybe you can use at a later time in this class which is nice but over here we're gonna go on the top left and we're gonna change this into inches and um, we're gonna change this to let's do eight and a half by 11, which is the size of a piece of paper, and we're gonna hit create. Now we've got a plain white piece of paper. We don't actually need to use this right now, but I do think it was important to do that. We're gonna go up to file, open, and then you're gonna to go to where you saved that picture, and we're gonna open up the hearts. Now, everything looks identical to Photoshop. The only thing is some of your shortcuts are gonna be different because you're on a browser versus you're on um, an actual software. So for example, one of the shortcuts is Control T. That is transform, which we'll talk about here in a moment. That you can't do because if you pay attention and I do Control T, Control T opens a new tab on my computer, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in here and to zoom in, you're going to hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and use the scrolly on your mouse to zoom in and zoom out. Now, I would highly suggest you get a mouse. Uh, I know you have the trackpad on your Chromebooks. Go online, go on Amazon, get yourself a wireless mouse or even a wired mouse for your preference. They're cheap and it's gonna make your process doing anything on this laptop a bunch easier, especially in Photoshop. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna remove one of the hearts. So we're gonna come over here and this third one down is called the lasso select. Uh, in Photoshop it's called lasso tool, so just remember it's called lasso. Lasso allows you to make any type of shape that you want. So I'm gonna go around this heart and it doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, and it's gonna make these dots, which on Photoshop are dancing dots. They actually move kind of like ants in a row. And you're going to have that selected and you can hit delete on the keyboard and it's going to remove that heart. Control D is deselect, Control D on your keyboard and it's gonna remove that lasso tool or that quick selection. Okay, that's how you're gonna remove something. If you wanna make a copy of something and duplicate it, the process is very similar. So you're gonna click on your lasso tool again, and you're going to make a shape around your shape. And you should be able to control C, which is copy, and control V, which is paste. Now you'll notice over here, it says layer one, if we uneyeball layer one, it doesn't look like anything's happened because it's sitting directly on top of the original layer. I wanna move that because it's sitting right on top of the original layer, and I wanna put it over here. So this is the um, transform that I talked about earlier. Transform's gonna allow you to move and to resize. So instead of Control T like you would do in Photoshop, you're gonna do Control Alt T and you'll see that that layer is selected over here. We have it darked out in gray. When I did the Control T, it's gonna put this box around it, which now means I can click and move this. I can rotate it, so if I hover my mouse over the corners here, I can click and turn it. 
I can still move it and I can make it bigger or smaller. So what I want you to do is the same thing. You're going to copy, paste it, control T for transform, make it a little bigger, move it off to the side. And when you're happy with it, you're going to go up here to the check mark and confirm it. Now you will notice this is a little bit blurry. That's what happens when you copy something and you make it bigger. The quality of it's going to disappear. Right? So that's not too bad. We're going to do some other uh, messing around with the hearts. We're going to look over here and we have a bunch of other tools. So what we're going to choose next is our paint bucket tool. Your paint bucket tool is going to be found underneath this gradient rectangle. You need to right click on it to get the two selections to come up. Otherwise, it will default to the top gradient tool. So you're going to click on paint bucket. And down here, you're going to see color swatches. If you double click on that, you're going to get this window to open. It's going to show you all your colors of your rainbow. This is called a hex code. Um, your hex code is very specific to the color that you have selected. So let's say you want to try and do like a Fenton blue. All right, so this is pretty close. You'll know that the hex code changed. So if I ever want to reuse the same color over and over, it'd be really good to maybe grab a sticky note and write down this code so then I can make the hearts all the same color. So let's say I want to do a red heart. Okay, that looks nice. I'm going to copy, control C, this hex code. I'm going to hit OK. And now I can come in with this paint bucket tool and I can, you'll notice the whole thing turned red. Why? Because I'm on this layer. I want to be back on my background layer. So I'm going to undo, which is Control Z. I'm going to go back to this background layer. And now I should be able to go back to my paint bucket tool. I still have this red and I'm going to select inside where I want the colors to go. Now, if you pay attention, if I try to click on this heart, it's going to make the whole background because there's background there. If I want to go and change this heart to be red, I have to select this layer over here and click on it on the inside. Okay. Let's say you want to do more than one color. Not a problem. You can come in here. You can pick a different color. Hit OK. And again, make sure you're on the correct layer. You can have as much fun with messing around with colors that you want. Okay. And now you have different color hearts. Let's say we want layer one and the background layer to be on the same file or on the same layer. If we hold down the control key, we should be able to click on both layers and have them both dark selected. If you right click, you're going to go down to merge layers. Merging the layers will bring everything together. So now if I want to go and change a color, I should be able to do so on all of my hearts at the same time. Let's say we want to clear out a color. We're going to go up to select, color range, and I'm going to click on the yellow. You'll notice this screen pops up and it's kind of previewed you everywhere where that color that you clicked on is. I'm going to hit OK. You realize those dancing dots are back. If you hit delete right now, it's going to remove everything that's in that selection. Control D is going to get you out of it. I want to backtrack and we're going to control Z a few steps. We're going to get us back to where we were before. I now want to actually get rid of the black border around the hearts and I want to keep the yellow hearts. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do select, 
color range. Now I could zoom in and I can click on the black. We can hit OK and you'll notice that all the black is selected and we can hit delete. Control D to deselect. Now we got a lot of it but you will notice that there's still some lingering. I'm going to show you a different way to do it so I'm going to undo my steps select color range. I'm going to click on the yellow and then I'm going to hit OK. So yes, all my yellow is selected. I'm going to go to select inverse. Inverse is now grabbing everything else except where the yellow is. And it's hard to tell, but if you'll notice, now there's dancing dots around the square and around the yellow heart. So now everything else is selected. If there's a random straight dot somewhere where we have those gray that's kind of showing up outside of the black, now when we hit delete, that did just about nothing. I guess if I keep hitting delete, it is getting rid of more, but it's not really doing a great job. Well, let's undo that a few steps until we're back to where we were. Okay, so let's say we want to get rid of one of the colors, so yellow or black. We're going to go up here to the select color range. I'm going to click on the yellow. I'm going to move this down a little bit. This is just how much gets grabbed. Usually it'll preview for you here in the window like what's going to get grabbed or not. I think we're going to stick with replace here. We're going to hit OK. If we hit delete on the keyboard, all the yellow is gone. We're going to control D and you're going to be left with the black outline. Now, Obviously you can tell it's not ideal. It has been taking away a lot of the black. Um, there is a way to fix this. We're gonna go to filter, other, minimum. Now this is hard to remember because we actually wanna thicken up those black lines. We wanna bring them back. So we're gonna go to minimum. And obviously that's a little too thick. Typically the number that I use is a one. <laughs> so you can see that nicely thickened up all of our lines. We're gonna hit okay. What would this be used with? If you have some kind of design that you wanna do on a t-shirt that's very thin, and I'm gonna tell you that the screen's not gonna be able to see that, this is how you're going to do it. And I'll uh, do an example here in a little bit. Now you'll notice that this little part here did not get filled in. So we're going to go up to the pencil tool. So we're going to right click on this brush tool and the second one is a pencil tool. We need the color of our pencil to be black. If you grab this little dot and you drag it all the way to the bottom right, you're going to see your hex code is zeros. Top left is going to be white. It's always going to be F's. So we want to go bottom right. Now I'm going to just draw a dot. You're going to Apparently it likes to be yellow, so we're going to go grab black. The dot is too big, especially for what we need it to be. So we need to make the size of it smaller. So we're going to come up here and we're going to mess around with this size button. We can see the size of our pencil now compared to our shape. So this is kind of you just figuring it out. It's not any code. So this looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom in. So now I can kind of fill in my heart. All right, so you'll see there's this kind of purpley, pinky color here. You can click and just type in a number if you want to do that as well. So that looks good. Now I need to get rid of these two dots I drew. So you can come over to the eraser tool. Um, which is in a different spot than 
it is on Photoshop. So we're going to go here to the eraser tool, and then you're going to just hover over your dots and erase them. Now, you can do the same with this gray background. You can make your tool smaller, just like you made your pencil tool smaller. And you can come in here and you can try and delete all this shadowing if you wanted. You can see it looks a lot better. The other option is going back to our roots, which was the select color range. We're going to zoom in. So this software doesn't allow you to zoom in. So you're going to have to kind of click from a distance. You're going to hit OK and then hit delete. Again, it doesn't really look like it's doing much. I think the real Photoshop has got this beat. Um, I'm going to undo it so it's back to where it was. But you can go through by hand and sit and delete and erase all of this extra gray. Is it time consuming? Yes. Is it worth it? Yes. Okay. And then to save your project, you're going to go here and you're going to export it as a PNG. We're going to talk about PNGs a little bit more, um, the difference between a PNG and a JPEG. So PNG, and then you can leave all these settings. You're going to hit save and it's just going to fall down here. It'll go to your drive. Um, at this point, it's just in my downloads folder, so I'm going to actually move it to where I'm going to save my work, which for this um, is going to be my desktop. So now if I click on this picture and I open it up, I have a blank white background with hearts that have no color in them. Now you can tell we can still see that gray. So if you look at this one that I started to clean up, it looks much better. So I would really consider doing that um, and cleaning it up and, and taking the time to do it.